And if you have a story to tell, we're trying to record these in our People's History of the School of Theology, which is one of the digital projects of the Center for Global Christianity and Mission, also with collaboration from the alumni and also with the theology school. So now I'm gonna do a march through some of our alums, each of which is the tip of an iceberg, if you, know, if you think of network theory. So here we've got Bishop William Oldham. He was an Anglo-Indian, bishop of the first bishop of the Methodist Episcopal Church in Southern Asia, founder of the Anglo-Chinese School in Singapore in 1886. He was also the first Methodist bishop in South America. Go figure, three complete, he, this is guys like on four different continents. That's amazing. Here's Edgar Helms in 1895, founder of Morgan Memorial Goodwill Industries. He taught missions at STH for many years. His wife taught in the Deaconess School. He worked in the immigrant North End out of Morgan Memorial Church, founding night schools, kindergartens, a music program, and so on. And of course, he began collecting cast off goods from the wealthy and had poor people fix them up to resell. He founded the Morgan Memorial School of Applied Christianity that then also merged into the Deaconess School and then into the Theology School. Goodwill pioneered the self-help model and today Goodwill Industries is the world's largest private sector employer of people with disabilities and disadvantaged conditions. Here's Peter Dunoff, Dumas, Dumas, graduate, 1893, also known as Bainsa Duma, the ascended master of the Universal White Brotherhood, mystic musician, Bulgarian nationalist, invan invented a dance set of dance exercises that Bulgarians do at the top of hilltops even now. He, was, he died in 1944 by um, being beaten up by the communists, so he's seen as a Bulgarian nationalist. Here we have Samuel Logan Bringle, who was the chief theologian of the Salvation Army. Samuel Logan Bringle was hit in the head by a brick while evangelizing as a theology student in, in the West End. And then he was in bed sick for a year. And when, but he was a great holiness writer and is considered the first real theologian of the Salvation Army. Helen uh, Frederick Bond Fisher, Head of the Layman's Missionary Movement wrote the report on the steel strike in 1915, Bishop of Calcutta in 1920. <laughs> Helen Kim graduates from the School of uh, Religious Education in 1925, is the first Korean president of Iwa Women's University and world president of the YWCA. Here we have George Fox, one of the immortal four chaplains who uh, with the other three chaplains, one Roman Catholic, a Protestant, and a Jewish chaplain, um, were on the troop ship, the Dorchester, in 1941, and was taking raw troops like in draft inductees across the North Sea. They were hit by torpedoes, went down, the young men panicked, the four chaplains gave up their life jackets and as the ship went down, they were seen with their arms linked reciting the Lord, praying the Lord's Prayer together. This became a sign of hope and inspiration for ecumenism in the midst of war. So Methodists provided the largest number of military chaplains in World War II. They also provided the largest number of conscientious objectors. So here we have three famous pacifists who graduated from the theology school. John Swamley, who if you read his autobiography, he apparently converted his entire floor here in his, the dorm here in the theology school to pacifism while he was a student here. Um, we have Georgia Harkness, the, the famous theologian, and Walter Mulder. Um, I'm, I'm taking the time to tell his story. Some of you have heard it, but, but you know, see there's a picture of Walter quieting the protesters in uh, Marsh Chapel in, in the late 70s. It's those of you from 1970 to 72, you know about this. Well, apparently, you have to correct me on this, Walter told me this story. He said, you all, and I'm pointing to you guys that are from 1970, 1972, <laughs> We're blowing up the curriculum here at the theology school. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and you had Walters back to the wall, um, so, and you're saying, why are you teaching that irrelevant stuff? We need to be going out and marching in the streets. And Walter told me this, 
He said, I said to them, all my life I've been a socialist and a pacifist. And in 20 years when you grow up, you're gonna be a middle class minister, basically with a minivan and a house in the suburbs, and I will still be a socialist and a pacifist. <laughs> Now, I want to know if that's true, and then maybe some of you can, can address that. Tell them about the Feet Fringe of Methodism. Right. That's a great ball. Right. You know, during the 1950s, there was um, the House on American Activities Committee that Bishop Oxnum had to speak in for and everything. So, Reader's Digest wrote, somebody wrote a story about the pink dean of Methodism, meaning Walter Mulder and this socialist institution here. So Martha Mulder made Walter a pink shawl that he then wore proudly as the pink dean of Methodism. <laughs> so, here's a graduate from 1967, 1963, the, uh, Josiah Kabira, the first black African bishop of the Northwest Diocese of, in Tanzania who also was first African president of the Lutheran World Federation and the headquarters of the All African Council Churches are named the Josiah Bira headquarters. Here we have Bishop Yap Kim Howe, first Methodist Bishop of Singapore. Again, a gripping story of how Japanese broke his legs and as he's recovering, um, he has a conversion or he, he go, decides to go into ministry. But he became well known in the late in life for supporting LGBTQ rights in Singapore. Here we have two people that I'm sure some of you folks know. Uh, the late Richard Dietz, who was a great leader in the Fellowship of Reconciliation and taught the nonviolent activism to folks in the Philippines during their Philippine um, nonviolent revolution. Phil Bosserman, one of the early leaders of the Peace Corps and one of the founders of the field of conflict transformation. And so here's two of our other graduates that you probably know. Then we have Reverend Ed King, hero of the civil rights movement, tortured by the Ku Klux Klan. Here is Ed right here, standing behind the sit-in at the Woolworth counter in Jackson, Mississippi, as they're being abused by a mob. Um, he was he had lots of stories to tell and when I went to speak at the Mississippi <laughs> Annual Conference some years ago, it was actually the 50th anniversary of the Freedom Riders and Ed was there and showed me the pictures of the people on the wall and told me about them. But he was the vice presidential candidate for the Mississippi, for the, um, it was the Democratic Freedom Party under Fannie Lou Hamer. He was the vice presidential candidate and here you see him as the vice the lieutenant governor candidate in an interracial slate trying to integrate Mississippi politics. Ed King is still alive. Here we see the Reverend John McCullough uh, did mission, did, was a US two missionary and then became CEO of Church World Service. And here's another trio of bishops who also are international folks. Bishop Ian Douglas, who was a missionary in Haiti then is now the Episcopal Bishop in Connecticut, though he's retiring, has the St. Augustine, St. Augustine, St. Augustine Medal uh, for organizing the Lambeth conferences. Do, um, Reverend Dr. Kenelioni Ketsubile, who was head of the mission desk of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa and is now a bishop. Um, bishop Abraham Mar Polosi, Martoma Bishop, who focused on mission and Christian education and he's just been elected to the uh, Central Committee of the World Council of Churches at their meeting last month. Here's two other people, Olu Menje, principal of Rick's Institute in Liberia, and who was the youngest vice president of the Baptist World, Worldwide World Federation. And we also see Ruth Padilla DeBorst, who was head of spiritual formation for World Vision International and is the head of Infamet which is the um, network of progressive evangelical mission agencies worldwide. She's also a missionary in Costa Rica. Now we see uh, Dr. Sungduk Oak, who's the professor of Korean Christianity in UCLA, a really groundbreaking scholar there. And um, Andrea Roca Suarez, 
who is the agent of the, the representative of what's women of faith, what was United Methodist Women for South America, and she's a, a woman, woman's agency missionary in Brazil. Um, that Father Dr. Jean-Luc Onyegi is the director of the Jesuit Historical Institute in Nairobi, uh, the, the last um, general of the Jesuits before he passed away wanted to decentralize the historical work of the Jesuits and not have everything be in Rome. So Jean-Luc is kind of in charge of collecting everything on Catholic history in Africa. Big job. And here we see the Reverend Dr. Casely Echo Esamua, Secretary of the Global Christian Forum, which is one of the major ecumenical agencies. He's a former missions pastor in two churches, uh, worked with Ghanaian migrant churches, and he's uh, the head, he just recently met with the Pope and was at, uh, representing the Global Christian Forum at the Assembly of the World Council of Churches. Okay, I could go on, but I'm gonna stop here. And um, I think I'll just stop. I'm gonna drink some water, so. Yeah.